Hi, my name is Matt Ruark. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Soil Science and an extension specialist in nutrient management and soil fertility. And today it's late September and I'm standing in a cover crops demonstration trial uh, that was planted after winter wheat and we're at the Arlington Agricultural Experiment Station just north of Madison, Wisconsin. So today I'd like to talk about cover crops that can be used uh, or planted after winter wheat or an early season vegetable harvest. And so the first crop I'd like to talk about is cereal rye. Cereal rye is otherwise known as winter rye or grain rye. Uh, the advantages to planting cereal rye are that it establishes quickly, provides really great ground cover for uh, mitigation against erosion losses, wind or water erosion losses. Um, what we have here is two months of growth and over this two months of growth uh, it has been able to scavenge a lot of nitrogen, excess nitrogen from the soil system to help reduce uh, nitrate losses. Uh, and the other advantage is that it will survive the winter so it will grow also a little bit uh, in the spring if you let it. Uh, other types of grasses can be grown as well such as oats, however oats do not uh, survive the winter but they do establish quickly and scavenge nitrogen along the same lines as a cereal rye. Uh, it's also important to note cereal rye or winter rye should not be confused with annual or Italian rye grass. And Italian rye grass uh, can also be planted at the same time and has similar benefits of establishing quickly and scavenging nitrogen, but we don't expect it to survive the winters. Uh, on the occasion that it would survive uh, the winters, we find that it can be very difficult to control and can be a weed in the subsequent crop. Uh, we do recommend uh, chemical killing and incorporation of the material into the soil to help to complete the kill uh, and then help improve uh, organic material by uh, organic matter content of the soil by uh, adding organic material into the soil system which can be incredibly beneficial if you have a system uh, where you're removing wheat straw or corn silage uh, and you want to replace that carbon input back into your soil. The potential drawback of planting cereal rye, oats, or Italian ryegrass is that they have a relatively high C to N ratio uh, which will result in a net immobilization of nitrogen in the system. So it does not provide any nitrogen uh, credit to the subsequent crop. Now the Italian ryegrass and a very immature rye or cereal rye will have a little bit lower C to N ratio and may not have as big of a, an immobilization effect but there is no nitrogen credit uh, that's been discovered. So the second cover crop I'd like to discuss are legume cover crops. And so these can be clovers such as red clover, berceme clover, crimson clover, sweet clover or white clover, uh, vetches such as hairy vetch or chickling vetch, or other legumes such as annual medic, field peas or alfalfa. So the advantages of planting a legume are to provide a nitrogen credit for the subsequent crop. And so the legumes uh, have a symbiotic relationship with soil bacteria which infect the plant root. These bacteria assimilate nitrogen from the atmosphere and can be, which can be incorporated into the, by the bacteria and used by the plant. So it's a net positive gain of nitrogen into the soil system. The legumes typically have a very or a relatively low C to N ratio which means that they will break down quickly and result in a net mineralization of nitrogen and supply nitro that nitrogen that's tied up in the biomass will get released and available to the subsequent crop. Uh, we have different nitrogen credits uh, that we recommend. Uh, if you can uh, any legume that you plant that's less than six inches tall will get a 40 pound nitrogen credit. Greater than six inches we have separate recommendations for alfalfa, sweet clover, red clover, and hairy vetch. And we provide a range of, nitro a range of nitrogen credit that you can take uh, based on how long the crop's been growing and how, uh, how thick the stand will be. 
The field that I'm standing in right now is a clover that was planted with a nurse crop of oats. And so the value of planting a companion crop or nurse crop uh, is that the oats will establish quickly, help suppress some weeds, scavenge a little nitrogen, and then which allows the, the clover to grow up underneath and, uh, and, and flourish in this system. So uh, the other advantages to Bursim clover are that it will winter kill, so you do not have to or you can um, skip some tillage or incorporation or chemical killing uh, with Bursim clover that will be required with other clovers that will likely survive the winter. So the third type of cover crop I'd like to talk about today is oilseed radish. Oilseed radish is also referred to as forage radish and is trademarked under the name of tillage radish. Now the advantage to, advantages to growing oilseed radish are that it establishes quickly, uh, provides really good ground cover for erosion control, uh, will scavenge residual nitrogen from your system, and also with its deep tap root will break through uh, compacted layers performing a biotillage. Now uh, the radish will also winter kill which means there's very little residue that you will have to manage the following spring. And the fact that it does perform biotillage means you may be able to skip a tillage pass in the spring as well. Now there's uh, the disadvantage to growing uh, radish is that it does require a certain amount of nitrogen to grow and establish quickly. It does not grow or establish well in low nitrogen systems. Now there are other types of brassica cover crops in the family of brassica that can be grown such as turnip, uh, canola, and mustards. And collectively uh, this brassica family has uh, been shown to have tremendous benefits uh, relative to weed and disease control. However, our understanding of their ability uh, to be used in an integrated pest management system is still in its infancy.